Welcome back. With Nigeria's debt at 33 trillion, the Senate has given an accelerated approval to President Mohamed Buhari's request to raise a fresh loan of 850 billion naira from the domestic capital market to finance projects in the 2020 budget. This was given soon after the President of the Senate, Senator Hamid Lawan, read a letter from the President, Mohamed Buhari, seeking for the approval of the loan. The President's letter stated that the loan will enable his government to adequately finance projects in the 2020 budget. Still with us to have a conversation on this is Bolao Olojade, an economist, and also via Skype, we have Muda Yusuf, Director General, Lagos Chambers of Commerce, via telephone, and also Plus TV Africa Business Analyst, Irene Obani via Skype. Thank you, gentlemen and lady, for joining us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. President Mohamed Buhari asked the Senate to approve 850 billion naira loan for his administration to fund the 2020 budget. And the Senate gave an accelerated approval to his request to raise the loan from the domestic capital market. Can you help us explain this in the layman's term for our non-business related audience to understand? Bella, I'll start with you as the economist here. Okay. Um, we're all aware of what has been happening in the, in the uh, international market for oil. Uh, so for a country like ours, uh, which is dependent on, on oil as a, as a crucial source of income, uh, there's already a problem. A lot of uh, vessels are floating in the, in, the, in the waters, international waters, and they're not being picked up. Even with a discount as low as $10 a, a barrel, oil has still not been bought. Apart from that, you now have a general depression in the world economy. And Nigeria is not isolated. We're not immune to this. So that means that technically, Nigeria is going to be in recession. If we, by the time we see all those uh, val we validate this with the MBS numbers. We'll be in recession. Um, so the implication of that is that there is the, the revenue that the government has projected is not on the table. In the midst of this, we have to continue to spend. When you are in recession, one tested approach to getting out of recession is to spend. The more you put money in the hands of individuals, the more government spend, the more the consumption in the space, the better for all of us. That is what the whole idea of stimulus is all about. Okay. So it might be ideal that under the circumstance, we may need to borrow. But what we are borrowing for, how we're going to utilize the borrowing, that's another kettle of fish entirely. But it's not out of place to want to borrow at this point in time. All right, Irene Obani, as a business analyst, how do you begin to put this together and how does this pan out for us eventually? All right, um, let me start with this. I don't believe that this particular request is as recent as we may assume. Before the request to revise the budget, the 2020 budget, you would know that um, our deficit at the time was about 1.8 trillion naira. And so they had agreed to split it to borrow 850 billion naira from the domestic market and the second 850 billion naira from the foreign market. However, this was, of course, before the entire um, global pandemic, the COVID-19 issue that has, we've seen oil prices, like Bolan said, going really, really down. This, as of Tuesday, the bench Brent crude was trading at just $19, a little over $19, about $19.95 a barrel. Now, at this point, interest rates, if you have to borrow from the domestic markets, would probably be say, somewhere around 12% thereabouts, which would be quite expensive, and increasing our debt burden, future debt burden for the country. So now they're requesting that that other 850 billion naira be renavigated into the domestic market, where we are now going to be borrowing it in in house rather than you know externally. That's that's actually what it is. And you know the government could go through it either Sukuk bond or green bond, any of them. There are quite a number of them that the government could you know um, request borrowing from. All right, um, well, our guest by phone, Mudashu, you, you want to quickly say something about this and your, your own predisposition about this $850 billion loan as requested by Mr. President and given accelerated um, assent by, by the National Assembly? <clears throat> well, I agree with the other two uh, speakers. Okay. We have a major fiscal crisis right now. First, Revenue from oil uh, has practically collapsed. 
because of the situation, first with the oil price, second with the oil output. Even we produce now, we can hardly find buyers. And even our cost of production, some people have estimated it to be around $30 per barrel. So oil is selling for maybe around $20 now. So the revenue window from the oil and gas sector is almost practically short. So we are left with either to borrow domestically, borrow externally, or uh, generate internally internal revenue. Those are the options that we have. Mr. Internally, yeah. source, internal sources of revenue doesn't come that fast. So the quick win in terms of funding is borrowing and domestic borrowing. So what uh, Irene said, I think that's the situation. With the current global financial situation and with the current situation with the Nigerian economy, we don't have that much level of credit worthiness to source international funding. Now, Mr. So Muda, that is why yes, Mr. Muda. government is now looking inwards to borrow money domestically. So obviously, that is going to escalate our debt service to revenue ratio, possibly to push it to as high as maybe 100 cents, because it's already bad already, you know, and that is going to put a lot of pressure. Then we're also likely to see possible crowding out of the private sector in the financial market. Now, Mr. So Muda, these are our, some debt, of the our debt is currently at about 33 trillion naira, and now yes. another loan has been approved. Now, you just stated that we're already in a bad place, you know, in, in, in our debt portfolio. Is this what our economy needs right now? Well, we don't have much choice. That is the problem. We don't have much <laughs> choice. You, the, the, all, all revenue is not coming in. The uh, non-oil revenue, it cannot respond as fast. So the only window is domestic foreign. So that is what we need to do. But what is also important is also to look at the cost of governance. Now, Mr. Bola, you, you we need to, to reduce that. the cost of governance. Yeah, Mr. That, that is very key. Which the government is not yet addressing the way we expect the government to address. Mr. Bola, our, our debt currently stands about 33 trillion naira. Do you think it's a good time for us to still go out borrowing? Well, in the circumstances we have found ourselves, borrowing is the immediate option that is available to us. There is no other option on the table. That's, that is the reality. Um, it, it, you see, this, this uh, borrowing thing, as, as, as it appears, when you said 33 trillion, in absolute terms, it, it doesn't really mean much. That, that, that is the reality. But what has made our debt problem to become severe is the fact that our revenue base is horrible. When your revenue base is horrible, it means that when you borrow, you're going to practically use most of this revenue to pay off the debt. That is, that is a problem. So the problem, you know, this is dissecting it to the root, is not the debt. The problem is the revenue. But because we cannot fix the revenue in the very short term, in the crisis situation that we are right now, we are going to have to depend on borrowing a little bit more. The question that comes to the mind then is the level of discipline that we need to put on the table for this kind of borrowing, because this is like, 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 like sticking your bones to borrow. So if you are doing that, you must ensure that you make the best of that kind of a, of, of a facility that we are taking. The, the market itself has a way of telling you whether you can borrow or not. If the market is trying to tell you that you cannot borrow this money, when you float that bond, nobody will buy it. As simple as that. That's the vote of confidence. But as long as the market still believes that, okay, it will be, they will be able to meet our obligations, the market will subscribe. If it is subscribed, it's a test of the fact that the market thinks you can take it up. If it is unsubscribed or poorly subscribed, the market is saying we don't believe in you. You can't pay that money back. Now, Irene, interestingly, this loan is to yeah. be sourced from the Nigeria capital market. And it, it's a known fact that the market operated under a very tough economic climate in 2019. 
as evident in the incessant um, bearish trend until the policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria, that is the CBN, OMO, um, the open market operations, came into effect. Now, how achievable do you think this is in the light of the fact that they, they intend to source for this fund from the domestic capital market? All right. Um, to be honest, the CBN has done quite well. We understand that. For example, you must have probably seen that news sometime yesterday or two days ago, where it said that the CBN from the, um, the window of the CRR, it actually took out 1.5 trillion or thereabouts because there was excess liquidity in the market. Before the OMO um, conversation came up where you know, there were now restrictions for those who could access it and who could not. You know, some people had already access some local, um, those within the local market had already accessed it. And at the time when this starts to um, mature, you start to see a lot of excess liquidity. And sometimes how it plays out is you, you are looking for other very useful and interests where the interest rate is quite favorable for you, where you can also now drop these monies. So, um, so I feel like we're in the right direction. And also, I'm trying to amplify what Bolaun said regarding your last conversation, um, your last question. Yeah. Nigeria was not on, it didn't come into this pandemic situation on a very strong economic footing, right? We have three different kinds of loans. We have the bilateral, the multilateral, and then the um, commercial. And you see that for cases where we, we, we are probably not even able to repay back these loans, right? You see that for multilaterals and bilaterals, they can, I mean, they don't mind, um, you know, helping out if, if you have, we couldn't, make, we couldn't meet up with our debt repayment, but not with the commercial guys, right? So we, for, for me, I feel like we have a long way to go, but then, however, the CBN is doing a, lo a lot, and yes. All right, in, in closing, um, gentlemen and, uh, and lady, I just want Mr. Muda, I think I'll, I'll have you go first. Benny, can I chip something in? All right, quickly, please. Yes. Benny, let me quickly chip something in. Please, go you, ahead. You were making reference to the capital market. Yes, please. Um, you are precluded, you from the way you framed the question, I could see that you were talking about the equity capital market. Yes. The government is not going to be borrowing from that shares. I'm worried. It's going to be a the debt capital market. So it's simply going to float a bond. It, it, there, are, there are several yeah, options. I mean, it's going to be a bond. So it won't have anything to do with the equity capital market. Yeah, okay. the debt capital market. Now, Mr. Muda, I mean, in closing, I'll take every one of your thoughts on this last question. How, how do you expect this to influence positively the, the, the country's GDP? Mr. Muda, let me start with you. <clears throat> what? The GDP, from all indications, <clears throat> is going to contract uh, significantly uh, this year. But if you have some of this liquidity in the system, it could also have some positive effect. But more importantly, just as I said, we need to check our cost of governance. We need to check our quality of spending so that you can also cut on the expenditure side. When you are managing a crisis of fiscal sustainability, it's not only about revenue, it's also about cost. So we need to work on both sides of the equation. All right, Irene, how, how do you see this influencing the GDP positively? Come again. Yeah, Irene, no, it's not. Mr. Moody, I'm done with you. Irene, how, how do you oh. see this impacting on the GDP positively, Irene? Okay, to be honest, it's going to have a very meager effect on the GDP, which okay. is a small effect. Because at the end of the day, GDP is val valued based on productivity. And you see major commercial centers like Lagos being on lockdown. We have Abuja. We also have Ogun State. You know, so at the end of the day, businesses are still closed. Anyways, we are hoping that they will start to open gradually. So it's not the, these debts requests really would not have as much impact as one may assume it would have on the economy until actual activities we start to produce you know exports and all of that that's when you'd see a big effect on our gdp and, and well, not just by okay. and, well, in closing how do you see this impacting on, on the gdp positively yeah uh, typically um a recession contracts the GDP. That, that is what it does. And what government is trying to do is to ensure that government spending is sustained. 
The essence of the sustenance is to drive up or stimulate consumption, which will help to rebuild the GDP. So the loan is helped to make us minimize, be able to minimize the effect of contraction on the GDP. That's, that's what the loan will do for us. All right, Mr. Muda Yusuf, I want to say thank you for joining us on Plus Politics and for your contribution, and also economics, Bolan Olujade, thank you very much for your contribution. And Plus TV Africa Thanks business so analyst, Irene Obani, thank you for joining us and for your contribution, Irene. Thank you. And this is my take. The fight against COVID-19 is a battle that other more advanced countries have been fighting since the beginning of the year 2020. For instance, the United Kingdom recorded its first case in January 2020 and today has over 157,000 cases. The fight is not one to be toyed with, which is why I believe the easing of the lockdown in the three states is kind of a mistake and will work against the progress achieved by the total lockdown in these states. I also believe Kano should have been locked down way before now, but like they say, better late than never. I plead with the Nigerians today to hold on and endure. If countries like Italy, Spain and the United States of America are still battling with this, we have a long way to go. COVID-19 is real and has claimed the lives of over 213,000 deaths globally. Stay at home if you can and be safe. And to the government, provide adequately for your citizens. We have been paying taxes. Our parents, grandparents pay taxes too. We have to find a way to take care of us because that is the job of the government. And this is the time for you to show that you are capable of true governance. And also, I think the president needs to tell us what he has done with the previous loans he has taken because these loans are going to be repaid by the future generations, our children, and we have to know what exactly they will be paying for. I also call for a more independent legislature, lawmakers who value the interests of Nigerians over that of their allegiance to the head. We have a long way in fixing our country. Let us refrain from taking rash decisions that could leave a bad taste in our mouth. And that's all for tonight. Thank you for watching. Plus Politics returns same time tomorrow. Stay safe.